All right, I think we're ready to get started here. Uh, my name is Dan. Uh, we have the, the rest of the GC here for Open Telemetry. We have Ted, Jurassi, Morgan, Alalita, and Austin. We're here representing the Open Telemetry Project, and we're going to give you some Open Telemetry Project updates. All right, hi everyone. Happy to see all of you here. Thank you for joining. Um, so we'll start with the community update very quickly. Uh, and as many of you know, how many of you are using Open Telemetry, by the way? All of you, I hope. <laughs> Thank you. So we are, we are, again, very happy to state that you know, our community is doing well and is continuing to grow. Um, we have, uh, at this point, contributions and more contributions coming in, and activity remains very high. So far, we've had 1,283 contributors, so it's a huge project at this point, 26,000 contributions, as well as 43,000 activity contributions across all repos. So that's pretty phenomenal. That's for the month, too. And for this month only. Oh. So, and last but not least, 1,560 organizations have actually contributed and participated in Open Telemetry, which is just amazing. So with that, uh, again, I'd like to do a call out to, you know, you can go to our website, you can go to opentelemetry.io for, you know, looking at documentation in case you haven't seen it already. Uh, and we also have the collector, collector contrib, Java, Java instrumentation, Go, Spec, all of these areas that, you know, again, are looking for contributors, so please join in. Um, we continue to gain new contributors, as I was saying, and we average about, at this point in time, you know, in the last month, about 1,102 contributors per month. So that's very high amount of activity. You know, different people file bugs or just uh, maintainers working with different contributors, doing PRs, uh, as well as issues, discussions, SIG meetings, all of the above, as well as, you know, uh, our ecosystem continues to expand. So we are super happy to see new integrations and native OT, uh, open telemetry support coming in into the uh, larger industry. .NET Aspire 9 toolkit actually supports an open telemetry natively out of the box, which is very cool for .NET developers. Uh, Next.js 15, version 15, also supports React in the ecosystem now, so that supports open telemetry. So you continue to see you know, language expansion and language support happening, uh, which is super exciting. And in the observability components that are very popular across the industry, Jaeger v2 now runs on the Open Telemetry Collector. For some of you who were there at the uh, observability day, yesterday, again, the Jaeger team had a really wonderful presentation. And uh, really, if you're interested, please go and read about the Collector integration and how they have integrated the Collector to run under the hood now in Jaeger. Prometheus v3 is also now coming uh, with support with, uh, for Open Telemetry and OTLP. Cortex, which is a multi-tenant version of Prometheus, again, also supports OTNP, so you continue to see all this you know, cross-collaboration and integration happening across the, across the hood. And last but not least, there is a, certifi a certification coming uh, from the CNCF, which is the Open Telemetry Certified Associate Okta, um, as it's called, so keep a lookout for it in the next few months. It's in beta right now, but it'll be coming around the corner, so that'll help also train up your organizations on really being specialists in open telemetry. With that, again, I'd also like to do a shout out for our end user community. And end users, as you know, continue to grow. We have hundreds of end users who are contributing to the project. Uh, and I'd like to do, just call out a few of them. Shopify has been a huge contributor, Meta, Apple, Capital One, JPMC, Skyscanner, eBay, Intuit, Microsoft, GitHub, Airbnb, Blue Sky, Cloudflare, Adobe, Alliance, Direct, and Atlassian, Miro, Vanguard, and Lockheed Martin. These are some of the, you know, again, uh, names I wanted to just call out, but there are a lot more than that. And if you see that you are not listed as an open telemetry user and an adopter, 
please reach out to us. We'll be happy to have you in. Um, and with that said, again, I'd like to switch over to Austin, who is going to do something very cool. So, oh, I thought we were doing it at the same time. It's fine. So one of the things that we've kind of heard as the GC um, and one of the things we've seen over the past few years is there's a lot of people that are contributing to open telemetry in ways that we can't measure through dev stats, right? There are people that are making great videos or blogs or just helping someone out, bringing open telemetry into their organization and acting as a champion to really you know, promulgate its use. And that doesn't show up in a list of you know, commits or pull requests. And what we're starting uh, this year is a new program we're calling Community Stars. And this is a way to recognize community members that have really gone above and beyond or have made some contribution that other people have noted um, and, and thanked, right? So this kind of came together rather quickly this year, uh, but now you know about it and we're gonna talk more about it going forward. So you'll be able to kind of get a head start on nominating people for 2025. But for this year, I'd like to thank the winners of our community stars. So you can see them here. Um, looking at you know how they've contributed, a lot of it is really in ver a variety of ways. So you have people that have done a lot of work in documentation localization. You know, I want to shout out um, anyone here work on the website, make a website contrib contributor. Yeah, they've done. <laughs> Y'all don't count. GCTC not eligible for, uh, for, for awards, by the way. So, <clears throat> but we've had some people come in and help to localize the documentation, right? We've had people in the community that have gone out and tried to make a lot of great content about using open telemetry in specific areas like Lambda. Um, and then we've had, you know, people like Adriana who have done so much work really making the end user SIG um, grow that and they do so much to make sure that things like the Open Telemetry Observatory are a success every KubeCon. So please give it up for our 2024 community stars. And if you recognize your name up there, um, come find me. We have a little thing, we have something for you, so. And if you do not recognize yourself up there or you hear about being up there and you're not here, um, we will post the list on GitHub and get in touch with you to get you your, your award. That said, uh, I'd like to bring Ted up to talk about our roadmap priorities and other exciting things. Hey, thank you very much. Okie dokie. So uh, let's look at our roadmap. So, uh, we are evolving our process of project management and roadmapping, uh, but we set our current priorities six months ago uh, for the second half of this year. Uh, these are the priorities that we decided to pursue for the project. Uh, at P0, continued investment in open telemetry artifacts. That just means our highest priority is continuing to stabilize uh, and finish the implementations of the SDKs, the instrumentation, the APIs, all the different signals in all the different languages, plus the collector. We want to really make sure that uh, we are keeping the pedal to the floor as far as bringing those uh, implementations to market and getting them fully stable. Uh, related to that, of course, the P1 is logs. This was of the three original signals, the last one uh, that needed to stabilize. So we wanted to see that done uh, uh, this year. Um, likewise, semantic conventions have really spun up in a big way. Uh, we have so many semantic conventions to get through, though, and it's so important to the project, uh, making sure that we're keeping the pace up uh, on stabilizing those has been incredibly critical. Then at P2, uh, we have the rest of our priorities. Client instrumentation, Otel's mostly been focused on the server side, but clients like browser, Android, and Swift are incredibly important. We want to have first class uh, implementations uh, in all of those environments, uh, and that's a lot of work, so we wanted to push hard on that. Profiling, the, the fourth signal coming in, uh, super huge, and then, um, Configuring open telemetry, uh, really improving how you configure that in two ways. One, by adding file-based configuration uh, everywhere. 
hugely important, and then adding a control plane so that you can push out these configuration changes across everything. Uh, we see that as like a long-term critical component that we definitely need. And last but certainly not least, the open telemetry demo always requires a lot of love and upkeep as things are constantly changing over there, and that's critical for people learning open telemetry. So those were our priorities uh, going forwards. And I'm happy to say if you look at the projects that we have been working on, they do line up with these priorities well. Uh, so just going over the spec, uh, the spec projects, um, we have multiple client instrumentation SIGs uh, uh, going strong right now. Uh, for browser, uh, we have very experimental support in browser. There's an older version of kind of browser support that's been around for a while, but uh, we've got a new, uh, new hotness coming. Uh, but that is still very experimental. Android is much farther along. Android is actually in beta, uh, and we really would like user feedback. Uh, so please kick the tires on, on Android. Uh, likewise, Swift has really picked up with Apple uh, joining the Swift SIG. I'm happy to say, um, and so we're now uh, we've now shipped support for Swift uh, 5.10 on iOS uh, 1.11. Uh, tracing is totally stable there. Logs are in beta. Uh, metrics are still uh, experimental. Uh, we would really love feedback uh, on this front. And all three of these implementations are in turn gated on some fundamental work. There are a couple of things that were fine when it comes to server side instrumentation, but when you get to the client, the environment is just different enough uh, that there were certain things on the server where we were like, all swans are white. And then we got to the client, and we're like, well, look at that black swan sitting right there. So there's a couple of fundamental things. One was logs. We were like, do we need a logging API for writing our own logs as instrumentation? Turns out we do, so we had to do that. And the other tricky wi uh, wicket has to do with um, resources. Long ago, we said resources are immutable for the lifespan of a service because that seemed to be true at the time. But then you get to the client and you discover you have these resource light things like the application state and sessions and all this stuff that are changing. And actually, the lifespan of the application is this kind of arbitrary unit compared to what it is on the server. Um, so this is all fundamental stuff that we need in order to get clients uh, over the finish line, uh, but we are actively working on all of this stuff. Um, and we would love help in all of these SIGs, so please, uh, if you're interested in any of this, uh, show up with a shovel. Um, final bit of roadmap stuff, uh, the control plane, as we mentioned, super critical. Um, so op-amp, uh, there's still spec work happening on op-amp, but it's in a really good spot. And we've been adding support for OpAmp in the collector, which is great. That support has been somewhat paused temporarily, uh, that implementation, simply because we're focusing on collector uh, V1 and getting over that finish line. And OpAmp control plane is not on the V1 roadmap. Uh, but once all of that uh, is over the finish line or at V1, we'll be pivoting back to OpAmp in the collector, hopefully. Uh, on the SDK side, uh, file-based configuration has really been coming along, and um, we are now at the point, while it's still experimental, it's ready uh, to be used, and so we are um, adding file-based configuration support to different languages. Java, Go, and PHP currently have experimental support. There's stuff getting worked on in other languages. Again, this is a place where more hands writing code would just make it go faster. Uh, so if you're interested in improving the developer experience for open telemetry, specifically around this installation experience where you're trying to install OTEL in your application, get the SDK installed, get the instrumentation installed, um, this revision where we go through and bolt file-based configuration, all this stuff onto everything, that really simplifies that. But it's a lot of work, so uh, please help us do it. Um, along the way, the other parts of developer experience, we'd like to improve um, the instrumentation experience, right? Like convenience APIs for like more simple metrics cases and other things. And last but not least, um, we want feedback from you guys about how we can improve our developer experience. So we're going to be coming out with a survey soon around all this. Uh, if you see it blow past you, please fill it out. Please let us know what annoys you about the project so we can fix it. Uh, 
And with that, we are going to move on to semantic conventions with Dan. You got one. Thank you. All right, so as Ted mentioned, uh, semantic conventions is very important to us. Uh, I believe it said P1 on the roadmap slide. Um, this is one of the larger and more ambitious parts of the project, uh, and it's moving along very quickly. Uh, this is all just since the last KubeCon in Paris six months ago. So when I looked yesterday, we had 186 PRs in that time that were merged, not just opened. Uh, we have 10 new components uh, in that time, including bringing over some new components from uh, ECS as we continue to merge ECS things into uh, the semantic inventions that would be file and user. Uh, and a few runtime specific things like uh, Go, Node, V8, and .NET metrics. Um, in addition, we've added uh, Gen AI, Azure, uh, Cloud Foundry, and profiling specific components to the semantic conventions. In addition to that, we're also uh, getting much closer to stabilization in a couple of other areas. Uh, so database client in particular is very close, currently release candidate, and we're hoping to have that stable soon. Uh, and messaging is getting closer every day. I believe that will be most likely the next stable semantic convention. Uh, but not just those two, we also have a, a fair handful here of SIGs that are actively working towards semantic convention stabilization. So we're currently working on CICD, client instrumentation, feature flag evaluation events, uh, Gen AI events, Kubernetes semantic conventions, security semantic conventions, uh, and system metrics. Uh, we're, of course, also working in other areas, but these are the ones that we feel we're moving along very well towards stability. Uh, and with that, I'll pass to Jirasi for some collector updates. All right, so most of the progress that we had for with the collector this year was um, with the V1 in mind. So we have a few of the uh, collector contributors here uh, that were working very hard this year to get um, close to V1. We are very close, um, and one of the new things that we have this year is a new distribution of the collector called OTLP, and that is gonna be the baseline for V1. So whenever we feel that a distribution like that is ready, uh, we would be ready to call the collector V1. We also created a new distribution of the collector tailored for Kubernetes. So if you need uh, Kubernetes processors and receivers, you can use the uh, OTEL call Kubernetes um, distribution. And, um, but most of the work that we've done were, was uh, under the hood, so uh, stabilizing internal APIs so that other com uh, components can consume those, uh, those modules and those APIs. Improving internal telemetry of the collector, so now the collector can uh, expose or export uh, traces, metrics, in uh, using open telemetry APIs. Uh, before we were using uh, open census, and now you can also configure the collector using the same way that you can configure uh, SDKs with a file-based configuration. So you can use the same, um, the same configuration to configure where to send internal telemetry from the collector to an external system. We've made uh, resiliency improvements, and we had a, a good focus on security as well. So we had a, an audit earlier this year where we found a couple of um, one CV, I think, or two CVs. Uh, but other than that, we've been, um, it, it was a, um, it's shown that the collector had a good security practices already. So we were very proud with the results of the report. Uh, we, we are now preparing to add support for profiling. So we had some work done on that already. Um, and um, we've done, <laughs> we heard that documentation was not the strongest part of the collector, so we were also working on improving the documentation there. In terms of resiliency, uh, post V1, we are gonna focus more on the resiliency aspects of the collector as well. And um, with that, now it's Morgan. Yeah, thanks, Jess. All right, so we've stood on stages like this at KubeCon over years past talking about new signal types. So just over two years ago, we introduced metrics to do open telemetry being a, a sort of a new GA feature. Last year, logs launched in open telemetry, again, as a GA feature that everyone can use. We've seen very substantial uptake of metrics and then logs in open telemetry. That has been quite exciting for us. Those three signals were part of the project's original promise. At the same time, over the last few years, we've also been discussing distributed profiling, 
uh, coming to the project. And this year, with the, the effective GA of, of metrics and logs, we as a community have had a lot of time to work on profiles. In fact, there's a lot of new contributors over the last year or two who have come into OpenTelemetry specifically to, work, specifically to work on this. And so this is very, very exciting. If you're not familiar with distributed continuous production profiling, it's, uh, it's a way to analyze the performance of your code at scale in your production uh, environment. And so it gives you visibility to a level that you don't typically get with metrics or logs or traces or other types of data. It gives you visibility into the actual performance of individual functions within your code and how those call hierarchies work. And really, you can use that to improve the performance and reduce the resource consumption of said functions in code. It's very, very powerful, and especially in large, uh, highly scaled environments where you cannot do uh, development time profiling on a single box. Right? This is really the only way to see the pr production performance of that code. And we're excited in that you know, all this work has been going on in OpenTelemetry to make this happen. And so there's a few major milestones that we've had this year. The first was profiling, the, the core part of the specification for profiling, and, and more specifically the data model, has now been merged into the OpenTelemetry spec. It's also available in part of the OpenTelemetry protocol. This is not a final version, right? Profiling is not GA yet. Once that happens, this will be final. But this is, you know, the sort of the bulk and sort of the most challenging part of the work of creating any new signal type within OpenTelemetry. And so that is complete. That has been merged earlier this year. The second major milestone is that Elastic donated their continuous profiling agent to OpenTelemetry. This is a system-wide profiler that can capture uh, stack traces and thus generate profiles for applications running in a broad set of languages running on a given host. It can also be used to attach to languages that you otherwise, or not languages, to applications that you otherwise may have challenges connecting to because maybe they're a third party app, maybe you don't own, own the source code. Maybe it's a system where you don't have the ability to really muddle around uh, on that box that much. And so it's very, very exciting. This is a substantial piece of code that has been donated to the project. And it can be run as a, uh, I believe, as a receiver to the OpenTelemetry collector. So it's nicely integrated into the rest of the OpenTelemetry ecosystem. That being said, that is not the end of the journey for profiling in OpenTelemetry. So we've done a lot of work on the profile, uh, so on the protocol rather, and, and the core specification for profiling. Where the bulk of the work remains, it's not the only part of the work, but where a large amount of it remains, is implementing OpenTelemetry profiling in the languages that have profiling as a built-in feature to their runtimes. So Go, for example, has an interface for preprof. Java, .NET, various other language runtimes have equivalents where you can actually capture profiles natively from those language runtimes. There's benefits to doing that over system-wide profiling. You can get more data, more types of data, types of data that are specific uh, or information that are specific to that language runtime. It's also a way of capturing profiles that has you know, the absolute minimum amount of overhead. And so there's a lot of implementation work being done right now in .NET, I believe in Java, as well as some other languages in OpenTelemetry to build those native language level implementations for profiling. And then finally, we have everything that I just discussed with the system agent for profiling that you can use on hosts where you have less control or for languages like C++ or others that are difficult to profile otherwise. Once all of this is complete, then we will take profiling to 1.0. There's still, as I mentioned, more work to be done. But the bulk of the big challenging parts of this, both with the specification and the implementation, are now complete. So we do expect this to happen relatively quickly. Uh, this is very, very big for the community. This is you know, the first sort of new signal that wasn't originally part of OpenTelemetry's original promise. Uh, and frankly, have, as someone who's worked on profiling, production profiling tools for many years, it's exciting to see, or I'm excited to see how mainstream, how broad these will go once it's easy enough to collect the data from OpenTelemetry so you can send it to any destination. Certainly, I expect uh, the insights gleaned from these profiles to become much more commonly used across the industry, and a lot of firms can benefit uh, from the cost reduction and performance enhancements that were otherwise unobtainable or invisible to them. Uh, so I mentioned uh, a few of these things about what has to, what has to uh, happen for profiling. So there's more language implementations. There's for some further development on the system profiling agent. Uh, we'll want to take the profiling signal to 1.0 with an OTLP. That'll be part of the GA uh, process. And then I think there's a, a bit more work on, on additional types of triggers for capturing profiles at certain times and certainly uh, some work that we want to do on correlating profiles of other signals, whether those be traces or other types of data. All right, and now we'll talk about the graduation process. All right, so 
uh, we've talked about graduation a couple times now. Um, I think this might be the third KubeCon where we've talked about graduation in a row. At least. <laughs> it's a long road. Uh, we're in the queue. We're waiting on um, the, someone in the TOC to pick it up. I anticipate that will happen. Um, and once that happens, more stuff will happen. And that more stuff might involve um, some changes to repos and various things. But don't worry about that. We'll take care of it. I will say. Um, the security audit we had wasn't just about the collector, it was for our core languages. So it was, uh, covered the Go, .NET, Java, Python SDKs, and they found zero problems in any of those. We had no reported CVEs, we had no reported issues at all. Um, they said it was one of the best, like, cleanest security audits they've ever had for a open source project through the CNCF. So, yeah. Um, so if you are a contributor to any of those, or in general, you know, pat yourself on the back. You, you deserve it for writing really clean code. Uh, with that, I think it's time to, yeah, talk about the last thing. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, Austin. And then I think we're super excited to get closer to graduation. At least we have our application filed. Now we're like a flight and queue, you know, waiting to be picked up by the air, TOC airport. So, you know, we'll see. <laughs> that should kick off in the, in the next few months, uh, if not weeks. Uh, and, and if you're interested in tracking the graduation process, I think uh, it, there is a project board for the TOC, so you can actually follow it there. So with that said, again, uh, we would like to Again, uh, join, uh, ask you to join our community if you are not already part of Open Telemetry. We need your help. And as you know, many of our GC members reiterated earlier, we, are, you know, we would love to have a few more engineers working on client instrumentation, uh, op amp in the collector and SDKs. Uh, and, and if any language is your strength, again, please get involved. Uh, the open telemetry demo, uh, which is always, you know, being used by everybody in our community to be able to, you know, learn more about the project and the different features, and as well as semantic conventions, right? Because there's a lot of effort happening there, and the more we standardize in that area, the better it becomes as a user experience for end users. And if you are already contributing, you can absolutely uh, volunteer a little bit more of your time to become an approver or a triager uh, for the language SDKs or the collector uh, and even the semantic convention SIGs. Uh, and, and if security is your passion or DevOps, CICD pipelines, again, there's a lot of work to be done in improving and continuously maintaining those for all the repos on our project. So please come and help our maintainers because that's something that, again, also enables them to spend more time on doing features work. Um, so last but not least, if you're a contributor, uh, please reach out to our SIG maintainers for the SIGs you're interested in. Many of them are around here, and with that, I'll pass the torch to Jurassi. Yeah, um, I know you all have questions about open telemetry, and we have the right people for you to ask your questions. So I would ask all of the maintainers and approvers of open telemetry to come to this stage or close to this stage uh, to answer questions from you. So if you have questions, uh, come down here to, to the microphone, uh, and our hotel experts are going to answer them. Cool. I see other approvers and maintainers that are not coming here. Uh, Don't be shy. Can we, uh, if any, does anyone have a burning passion to work on, to develop an IAC system? <laughs> Trask and I could use the help. Yeah. I think it's an external joke since ever. yeah. yeah. Uh, but yes, please, questions. Come to the mic. Surely someone has a question. I have a question. Okay. I went to a talk yesterday about file-based configuration, and it was very, very cool. But what happens if I use file-based configuration at the same time as configuring through, say, op-amp or configuring directly in process? Someone, someone that can answer that needs a mic. Pick, pick whoever. Uh, uh, op-amp configuration, not a thing. Yeah, it doesn't exist yet. I would love that to exist. Um, we can talk about that when it exists. But um, if there's uh, 
declarative configuration, that's the new branding for file-based configuration, uh, it's mutually exclusive with the environment variable based configuration interface. Uh, so, you know, you can reference those environment variables directly in a config file using this environment variable substitution syntax, uh, but uh, we couldn't find a good way to uh, define a, how to merge, you know, the intent specified in environment variables with what you're specif uh, specifying in uh, a config file. And so, um, rather than expose users to uh, confusing uh, prioritization, we said these are mutually exclusive. It's one or the other. Got him. All right. We have five minutes, so we have five minutes for questions. Yeah, thank you for the updates, and thank you all for all the work that you have been doing. I have a question uh, with open telemetry covering all the three pillars of observability, logging, matrix, and tracing. Uh, we have libraries, for example, in Java, there is Micrometer, right? And then there is SLF4J. Now you have logging APIs as well. How do you see uh, open telemetry? I see the, it as a replacement of uh, those, right? And especially with Micrometer, they have like tight integration in very popular frameworks like a Spring Boot, right? So how do you see them, where are they going, and are you working with these frameworks like a Spring Boot, where we will have, you know, sort of a native integration of open telemetry? Yeah, um, so let me start with the easy part, which is the SLF for J, uh, log for J. Um, so we don't, we aren't, like replacing those, um, our logging API is um, for bridging those logs into OTLP data, I see. as well as for emitting what we call events, which is something new that we're introducing on top of the logs API, on top of the logs proto, um, which we're using heavily in semantic conventions and client-side instrumentation and uh, Gen AI instrumentation, other things that want to emit these events um, in a very particularly structured way um, where we want to have an API for that. Um, on the uh, micrometer front, um, we actually uh, met, I wish uh, uh, Adib was here uh, uh, from the spring team. We met uh, yesterday, uh, had a long discussion over lunch, and uh, um, we really want to um, unify that story for the good of the whole community. Um, uh, Spring is instrumenting a lot of their internals using what they call the Micrometer Observation API, um, which is something different from Micrometer Tracing, which came from historically Spring Cloud Sleuth and Brave um, and what we're hoping we can do for people who want to go all in on open telemetry is to provide a observation, micrometer observation API implementation that just talks directly to open telemetry APIs. Um, and so we're hopeful working with their, their team that uh, we can make that story much smoother as well as uh, collaborating collaborating with them on the, currently we have an open telemetry spring uh, uh, boot starter, um, and they are interested, we'd like to collaborate with them and, and basically upstream that work into the spring ecosystem. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, next question, I think, because. Do, do we have time? We have time for like one more. Okay, one, one more question. Yeah. Oh. And then I'm happy to answer your other, any other questions. Yeah, P sure. if you have other questions, please come up um, when we're done, but. I or come to the observatory. But no yeah. problem. I have multiple questions, but I'll, I'll start with the Apache Arrow question. So, uh, like the support for Arrow, we expect it to implement those in the SDKs as well. No. No. So okay, I can. I can yeah. Can you talk that, about that? I can explain that really quickly. It's just because that it, that is a gateway protocol. It's stateful. The compression advantages you get from it only occur when it's active over a long period of time 
shoveling through a large fire hose of data. So for those local hops, right, from say an SDK to a local collector, you just, you don't actually gain any of, many of the benefits that you would get out of the Arrow protocol and the statefulness just gets in the way of, you know, um, round robining and like all kinds of other stuff you wanna do. Good question though, thank you. Yeah, it's good. Um, okay, that is. That's it? No more. Yeah, unfortunately that oh. is time. They, they want us but, to. Yeah, we'll still answer your question. Right, we'll still answer your back, question, yeah. but thank you all for coming. Thank you for being part of Open Telemetry. Please check us out this week at the observatory um, where everyone you've seen here and more will be around to answer questions and uh, have a big old time. Also, if you haven't, if you are a contributor or maintainer and you haven't already, come by and get your puzzle. We have these nice puzzles for you. And if you're not and you just want a puzzle, then come by tomorrow.